And what's up everyone, welcome to twitch.tv slash online. Sorry about the technical difficulties, I was having a little bit of a rough time since my host tonight, the great, the fancy, the flaky Adam Wheeler <laughs> did not make it to the event because he had to spend time with his spouse, which is an understandable thing to do. Um, we're going to be covering quite a few games tonight, we've got a full crew for you. I'm accompanied by the one and only that we've been missing for the last two months, uh, not not the last two months, I'm sorry, uh, the last two weeks. Ah, ah, take two weeks off, you call it two months. Yeah, well, ah. we felt it, it felt like it was two months, Chris. Uh, when you're gone, it's not it's just not the same, man. How you been? I, it's, uh, I, I've been home like everybody else. That's how I've been. <laughs> I've been locked in have. my house watching the world end. To be, how have you been? To be, I'm, I've, I've, been, I've been loving it, actually. Uh, aside from people dying outside, I've personally been uh, spending a lot of time with my family and loved ones and, and, and working a lot on opinions, which is the best way uh, to spend my time, in my opinion. And, uh, yeah, no, things, uh, things are reasonably good contextually speaking uh, you're in Japan and Japan just tightened up on its uh, its its policies to keep everybody quarantined I saw that on the news this morning so I was thinking about you but up till now you guys have been pretty yeah we were out looking at cherry blossoms and blah blah, blah. I wasn't but yeah. uh, the rest of the world was so you know you know diseases I mean, for everybody I guess you know I mean you know I mean DC actually and uh and cherry blossom is this thing where I'm at where I'm at but you're welcome. They all come from yeah. Japan. Actually, no, they do. all sent from Japan. And I think Not it's... that I did it. I was in Texas <laughs> at the time. I wasn't even born, but yeah. And I think it's all about the, the celebration of the U.S.-Japanese uh, relationship, too. Well, you know, it's things have gotten better since the bombing. So, you know, yes. there's that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> things have improved. We're in a better and, place now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's always a good thing. Am I fixing the stream live? Yes, I am. I'm a little bit overwhelmed tonight, but uh, let's uh, let's let's get going. I'm also I also want to introduce uh, Brad, who's uh, who's new to the team. And uh, Brad, we're excited to have you. I hope you enjoy the show. You should. It's uh, it's honestly the best thing we do at Opinoobs. Um And uh, look forward to covering seven games. I'm also accompanied by DJ Sketch. DJ Sketch, who we haven't seen. Uh, you know, I want to tell you three. I must have been at least three years, DJ. Uh, yeah, I, that sounds about right. Sounds, sounds about right. Back, back from the old days. I remember doing yeah. this with you. Yeah, we've evolved somewhat. Actually, we haven't yeah. evolved. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'd say we haven't evolved at all. <laughs> We've devolved. <laughs> We've devolved is what it is. <laughs> and of course, uh, yours truly, Addy and Logan. Uh, thanks for making it again, Addy and Logan. Uh, we're excited to have you. And this, uh, we're going to tweak it up a little bit. We're going to add a layer to the show. Ali, I don't want to kind of throw in the, you in the pit, but um, it occurred to me that I get a ton of, uh, of news blurbs on a, on a daily basis as, as the PR guy at OP Noobs. And I thought, hmm, maybe we should include some of that stuff on the, well, on, on the stream because uh, there's some really noteworthy game that, that are worth mentioning. Um, and uh, and I, so I put together a small selection of news. This is the... The very first time we're doing it, so bear with us if we f it up. Uh, I I don't think we, I don't think we will. Uh, but if you give me quite a bit, do, 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 do you have the spreadsheet in front of you, Eddie? Yeah, I do. Okay, not the spreadsheet, the, the Google Doc. And yeah. we're gonna cover we're gonna cover just about nine news blurbs for you that we think uh, you should put in uh, you should put in the spotlight and and you should keep an eye out on. Some of these games, frankly, I'm excited to play. Uh, some of these news are just stuff uh, you can latch on to, like free demos and uh, open betas and all that stuff. So we're gonna try and, and maximize utility for you guys as as we continue to build the show. The stream is finally looking somewhat decent uh i think i'm about to get the party started ali if you wanna if you wanna bring it home uh, i'll pass the microphone to you and uh i'll, I'll make i'll focus on uh, on showing you some footage sure all right so in the news this week starting up we have deep silver announcing a new digital ip windbound launching august 28th Deep Silver today announced their latest digital only title in partnership with developer Five Live Studios Windbound. The game pits a stranded warrior against the elements and fauna across mysterious forbidden islands, with each isle posing unpredictable challenges as players explore, hunt, craft, and sail their way to new discoveries. 
Windbound is set to launch on August 28th. <laughs> Success! Reading! I can read! <laughs> reading is fundamental! Humankind's feature focus, Shaping Your Legacy, is available now. Check out this video series posted this week on the studio's YouTube channel. Looks at how you'll be leaving your mark on history and the civilization that you'll be building along the way. Humankind is Amplitude Studios' magnum opus, a historical strategy game where you will rewrite the entire narrative of humankind, a convergence of culture, history, and values that allows you to create a civilization that is as unique as you are. How far will you push humankind? That is what if you're really boring? What if you're not unique at all? Like, I'm... Does that mean you make like a really boring civilization? Is that how that plays out? <laughs> Terrible. You Warhammer! Your house. <laughs> Keep it rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Warhammer Underworld's online postponed. It has moved because the game will not be releasing on the 7th. It will be re released on the 21st instead. Is that of this month, Fred? It doesn't say. Yeah, yeah, on the, this month. Yeah, totally. Warhammer Underworld's online is a digital adaptation of the explosive high stakes turn based strategy tabletop game from Gameworks or from Game Workshop that pits mighty warbands from the age of Sigmar universe against one another in an eternal player versus player battle for glory. Choose a warband, build your decks, and carve a path into victory using dice and card mechanics that offer boundless strategic depth. This so I'm assuming this might be a Corona postponement? Yeah, actually we can even slow down the news because I figured out technically how to loop that thing. Um, this, um, I'm actually, I'm, not, I'm never too excited about Warhammer, but I'm kind of excited about that one. Um, but one would think it's actually a Corona delay, but the the people who are designing it are probably just trying to finish a game of Warhammer yeah. before they actually release <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Next. <laughs> so, number four is Survive Together, Green Hell Co-op Mode. How well do you play with others? Creepy Jar has been hard at work on their content roadmap for Green Hell since its launch into 1.0 in September of 2019. And they're happy to announce that the most requested feature of all co-op mode will be arriving on April 7th, 2020. This What's is, yep, yeah, this is a title that um, has been making, have you? Have any of you guys played this one? Haven't no. heard of it. You I haven't, haven't heard, heard of it? Oh yeah, no, it's uh, it's actually pretty popular. Uh, it's in early, I think it's in early access. Um, not sure if it's- I guess still... you're a lot more street than we are. Than <laughs> I, I guess I am. All right, next. <laughs> Cards. The F2P WW2 CCG comes out uh, early. Comes out of early access with release uh, no longer TBD. Yep. Attention, cards. The WW, WW2. This is where it's going to get me. Can I just say World War II? CCG no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ready to take off on Steam after a year sitting in early access hangar. This one Spitfire of a game is ready to be propelled onto the skies of a full launch. Now with their nearly military precision cards has maneuvered through early access and into launch. Yep. Um, so if you're into CCGs, go for it. No, next, this one's funky. This one's funky. I like it. Okay. Wavy the Rocket and War Child UK team up for a You Play, We Pay charity event. To provide valuable support during the COVID crisis in a form of a charity stream, beginning on May 7th, Upper Room Games are asking for one hour of a streamer's time to play Wavy the Rocket when it releases on Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, or Stream Steam. Or Steam Stream, sorry. In exchange, Upper Room Games is donating two euro for every hour played and the sum of 200 or 2,500 hours. That's pretty cool. Uh, for more information and assets, check out the link in the chat and I'll drop it there for you guys. Unless somebody else has already yes, it up. Yes, please do. Okay, there you go. You're doing fantastic. You're, you're a natural lady. It's like you've done this all your life. Uh, next. I can read. Oh, this one is this one. Uh, no, the last one, actually. Go ahead. Sorry. <clears throat> Population Zero introducing the last re refuge. Uh, in the last episode of its Dev Diary series, Population Zero creative producer Dennis, I am not going to try to say that last name, Fred. Yeah, I know. The, I, I, I know. I, it's fine. I, that is the weirdest last name I've ever heard. I, Hi, I'm Dennis. I'm not going to try to say that last name, Fred. That, that must have been hell in school. Like, Jesus, the kids must have given him trouble about that. Uh, and game designer Julia, I'll try it, Melnikova. Discuss the Another last really name. unfortunate last name. Hi, I'm Julia. I'll try it. <laughs> I've seen that video. I've definitely seen that video. 
<laughs> anyway, these two discuss the idea behind the last refuge and its role in the narrative and gameplay. More than just a safe haven, this crashed spaceship serves as the refuge for humanity Whoa. on a strange and alien planet. And he, Population Zero is an ambitious fusion of excitement of exploration games, survival games, unpredictability, MMOs, persistence, and the thrill of session-based titles. It's due to launch on May 5th on Steam Early Access. And it looks like uh, we lost Brad in the process, which uh, threw all the cams off. <clears throat> oh no! <laughs> He's back. I said someone in chat said the cams are funky, I guess that explains it. Yes. I'm always funky. I, I live funky. <laughs> That's just the way your face Here's, looks. Oh, Brad's back. <laughs> Brad looking better than ever. Fantastic. All right. So uh, next one. Go ahead, Eddie. Okay. Eight, take a friend on a frightful adventure as the Dark Pictures anthology Man of the Dan delivers a second free friend's pass. The best gaming experiences are often shared with friends and starting today, all existing owners of the Dark Pictures anthology Man of Medan will gain access to another free friend pass, enabling players to experience one full playthrough of the game via multiplayer shared story mode with a friend that does not own the game. The Dark Pictures Anthology is a series of standalone, branching cinematic horror games that can also be played online with a friend. In Man of Medan, uh, five friends set sail on a holiday diving trip that soon changes into something much more sinister. Yeah, that, that, that <clears throat> that's gonna... <laughs> that's kind of a uh, that's kind of funky to me. I've never seen anything like that in terms of um, I've never seen a publisher do that before. Um, no, I think a lot of people are changing stuff up because of the COVID to try to get more traction on things. Yeah, and I think that's kind of nice that suddenly uh, capitalism is uh, taking a break and uh, <laughs> and actually uh, and actually doing nice things for people. Uh, uh, the last one I saw, I was frankly blown away uh so i'm just gonna shut up and let you have it <laughs> their flesh is your armor haunting souls like <clears throat> mortal shell revealed by veteran AAA developers april 2nd 2020 london mortar shell the uncompromising authentic and hauntingly beautiful action rpg built upon the ruthless traditions of the souls like genre has been revealed for the first time by the newly announced indie studio cold symmetry and its publishing partner playstack have you Mortal heard it? Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, sorry, <laughs> totally thought you were done. <laughs> Mortar Shell is a ruthless and deep action RPG that tests your sanity and resilience in a shattered world. Your adversaries spare no mercy with survival demanding superior awareness, precision, and instincts. Possess lost warriors, track down hidden sanctums uh, of the devout, and face formidable foes. Have you, have you guys heard of these devs before? Nope. Nope. But <laughs> this... I don't know why Playstack sounds familiar, but... But this does look hella good, doesn't it? It looks interesting for sure. Uh, Logan, you're you're a Dark Souls guy, aren't you? I'm I'm familiar with it. It looks like a Dark Souls was gonna say <clears throat> pretty much the side by side, slightly slightly more well lit in some of the scenes that they showed through their trailer. But... Yeah. Does this uh, pique your interest? Eh, it could it could be worth uh, a playthrough. Ah. Or at least or at least a stab at a playthrough. Yeah, you sound pretty skeptical. <laughs> time, my friend. Time. <laughs> Life time. experience. You know, time right now, man. I'll, 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 let, I'll let, you know, several million people play it for me and let me know before, you know, I potentially play it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let, me, let me move on to the stream. I'm going to get uh, off, up to my list. But you know what, uh, Ali, if, since you're off to such a great start, why, oh do, God. why don't Throw you just the bus. <laughs> why don't you just cover all the Literally. releases while I fix the stream that's gone broke like what 20 times by now today? <laughs> okay, I got you, friend. Thank you. All right. So releasing this week, we're going to start off with uh, today. So we have DLC for Planet Zoo South America pack. Enrich your zoo with over 250 new uh, scenery pieces inspired by the wonderfully diverse South American continent. Care for and learn about five unique new animals and craft zoos with distinct foliage and architecture ranging from the lush greens of the Amazon basin to the heights of the Andean mountain range. So this one's from Frontier um, as a developer and publisher. I let you pick that one up, Chris. 
I was gonna say this. I is said, this sounds like a Chris game here. This, this like... is just gonna give Chris all the all the pussy he wants yes. in his house. <laughs> you can have so many. Animals. You had to be there pre-show. <laughs> wow, you really had to be there pre-show for that joke. I, I feel like a lot of people are left out of that. I, I would like to make it clear that Logan had his cat on his shoulder earlier. And I said, wow, Logan, I really like your cat. And that became You did a... not use those words. No, I'm, the I'm words cleaning it up for the... <laughs> what I actually said was, wow, Logan pulled his pussy out, was what I actually said. But there was there was a cat on his shoulder at the time, which gives me the right <laughs> to use that word. There's the cat, right? So again, uh -huh. so the that's where that... The, it's 2020. You can't just make pussy references without holding a cat. There's a law. Right? That's the way the world works now. Uh, why oh, is this Lord my game? Mercy. I, aside, aside from you can't apparently have my love of pussy. What, what is Look at the anteaters. They're so cute. This, I don't know. This is, I don't, I can't figure out if I like this or not. It I want to move on because I'm getting from the stream that they can't hear us because of the sound. Um, sorry about the technical difficulties, guys. Today's been uh, kind of kind of bad. Uh, so I'm I'm just going to. I'm interested. Yeah. So basically, if you can hear us, we're interested. <laughs> we we want to play this. <laughs> move on, Haley. Uh, get get me the next one. All right, so also check out this week. Didn't make it, but we got a little spotlight on it. Um, pattern. Sometimes the art isn't the product of a grand vision, but rather the process. It's hard to know what you're trying to say until you've already said it. The developer is Gallon Drew, Michael Bell, and Bad Rue, and the publisher is going to be Icewater Games. And then Disaster Report 4, Summer Memories. In the shadow of a massive earthquake, you must brave a destroyed city where your choices will determine who survives. By Granzella Inc., uh, developer and NIS America is the publisher. In <laughs> okay, all right, so we're gonna move on to tomorrow's releases. It's gonna be Sludge Life. Sludge Life is a first person open world vandalism centric stroll through a polluted island full of cranky idiots and a vibe so thick you can taste it. Play as upcoming tagger ghosts set on staking their claim amongst the graffiti elite. It's going to be Terry Vellman and Dose One as the developer with uh, Devolver Digital as the publisher. And the big Devolver. Uh, and this one's, a, this one's a release on Epic Games. So if I can start with that one. I would like to start. And yeah, go say, ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I knew what Chris the would. fuck, Fred? What, what, the, what, what the fuck, dude? What? What, what? what the fuck? What what, what, why? Why what? am I looking at this? What, what the fuck, Fred? No. What? Okay, I'm Explain gonna, yourself. I'm going to stop you right there. Uh, <laughs> one, if it's Devolver, I'm going to automatically put it up uh, for right or for wrong. Uh, and you can criticize me for that. But uh, the, the Dev And it's not even that I'm a fan of Devolver. Uh, it's just that Devolver ain't going to pick a game to publish unless it's got... Unless it's got something. And, and like something more than a lot of the stuff. First of all, it's not... I'm going to preface this by saying it's not a big week in gaming uh, and and sludge life is the type of game that's um, it's uh, it's got personality it's got character uh, it's I, I bet you it sells I bet you it sells uh, it my abusive grandfather had personality didn't mean I want to <laughs> yeah. hang out with him I mean I, I, I don't get it man I, I just don't get it <laughs> Can someone back me up on this? Because uh, because I personally feel like this is a game worth. You don't have to buy it, but you should note that it exists. I mean, I, think... I can I can back you up with the fact that Devolver doesn't put something that isn't going to sell units. That's they just don't attach their their name to projects that aren't pushing forward. But like on the trying to be very edgy with like the spelling and everything and the art style. And the screenshots, it's like the sixth screenshot says this game sucks. Does that guy have two buttholes? <laughs> I, <laughs> Did I was just going to say for the record, any game that could evoke the comment, does that guy have two buttholes? It was a cat. The cat has two buttholes. That's a girl cat, Allie. That's how cats work. <laughs> no, they were side by side. Well, that's, not, that's very much not how cats work. I take it back. That's totally not how cats work. And as we decided earlier in this stream, I know pussy. Right? So that is totally not how cats work. Oh my God, I hate you so much. <laughs> 
<laughs> Brad, does this say anything to you? I think they're going to get some interesting feedback with the animation and with their characterization of people. And uh, that'll be a, a fun thread to watch. Just put it that way. Just a, I think just a, just a couple of weeks ago, we were saying that uh, we we're talking about Devolver and, and saying that Devolver um, got started. And, you know, like I, I should fact check that because I'm 99% sure that Devolver got started with Hotline Miami. Um, and this is to me, is in the, it's in the, tra- it's not, it's completely different from Hotline Miami, but it's in the tradition of Hotline Miami, if that makes sense. And there's, um, come on guys, like, <laughs> in tra- when it comes to indie, like this, this type of stuff, like it may no, not, no, 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 Fred, Chris, no, it's I'm, got- I'm, no, I'm gonna, I'm, no, not come on guys, it's come on Fred. Like th- <laughs> there are how many games out there right now now this week, just because some guy's pissing in a toilet and and spelling stuff Look like at the a cat, <laughs> and a, there's a two butthole cat, and you're like, well, we should know that this exists. No, I could I could go the rest of my life and not know that this exists. There's there's quality content out there. Why are we looking at this? I mean, come on, Fred. Really? I, no, no. I don't usually trash game devs, but look at this. I yeah, mean, you're being tough. Ugh. You're being tough on that one. I feel like I feel like you should you should look at the other 120 games that are coming out this week, and I guarantee you this one is a step up. <laughs> well, no. Jesus. When you when you say a step up, ultimately the big problem I have with it is also the messaging that it's putting forward. It's it's trying to be edgy for the sake of selling units. So if you think of like vandalism centric stroll through polluted island full of cranky idiots and a vibe so thick you can taste it. They're trying to be crass. They're trying to be cute. They're trying to get meme worthy shots that hope to push units. I don't. It's Aqua Teen Hunger Force is what it looks like. Like that has way that more show? personality. Than oh, way part. more. But it's it's like a discount version of that. You but know don't, but don't you think there's an audience for that, Logan? Maybe, but like, should there be? I don't know. There's an audience for child porn. It doesn't mean yeah. we should have it. I, you know, I just. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's. it's Here's the good point. It's well said. I will point. tell you a quick story while we're here, right? So my son comes back from school, right? And a bunch of new kids came to his school, and all of these new kids, I guess they were, they were mm-hmm. like, I don't know, they were hoodlums, right? And they were, they were, but they're like junior high hoodlums, so they don't know how to be a hoodlum yet, and so they're just like saying dirty words really loud and trying to get people's attention with it. And my son came home, and he was just like man, those kids had no class. I don't want to hang with those kids. And this is, this is that, this is, this is like, I need attention. So I'm just going to show you a two butthole cat and a guy pissing and I'm, Oh, look, there's going to be vandalism. And Oh, look at the ugly art. And I'm just like, no, it's not, ugly. I'm not going to get, I'm it's not going to give you a- my attention. I'm not going to, I'm not going to play your game. There's people out there making stuff that that's nice and good. And, and maybe I'm the old man in the audience saying, you know, can't we play something nice, but th- can't we play something nice? Like, did you not just see the game we just looked at a second ago with the beautiful Jaguars? Yeah. And the, the, we could have that, or we could have this. And I guess there's an audience for this, but I ain't it. And I refuse to be it or pander to it or be okay, nice okay, to so, those people. So you, don't like the, so you don't like the art design. You don't like the... You don't like the vibe and, and kind of uh, the influence it could have on young people. And, I, and I, I, t- I totally get that. And when I say you, I say I, I feel you guys like it's have a have, you guys have a consensus. Common denominator. Why are you going to do that? You why, guys have. Why we got to? I mean, you guys that? have a consensus on this. But w- how about level design? Because when I look at this, it looks like there's an interesting level design to me. It, it you know you look at the trailer and you're not quite sure um, the way the way your experience playing this game is kind of going to evolve. And to me, it feels very broad and almost like an open world indie game, you know, kind of, and, and, and that gets me, that gets me going. I, I would play this, uh, I would play this a couple hours and, and make them, I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is this, is this is the type of game when I look at a trailer, I cannot, and I, and I feel like that uh, goes against the purpose of this show, I cannot make up my mind on whether this is gonna be a good experience or just exactly what you say, which is... I'll tell you the honest truth. At the end of my rant, I realized that they got me, right? And here's what happened, right? My reaction 
is exactly what they were hoping for, right? Exactly. They were like, if we wrong. put this out, there's going to be some old timers that are going to be like, you know, square bagels, squiggles. No, like there, there's going to be some guy that's that's going to get all butthurt about it. And that's going to make sure that instead of the beautiful game that we just looked at, that we gave like two minutes, we're going to give you know eight minutes worth of time to this <clears throat> because Chris is going to get all butthurt about the double butthold cat. And, you know, okay, well done. Well played, kids. You win. This is exactly the reaction you wanted to provoke. I have given it to you. Well done, marketing department. Enjoy your well-earned money. I'm down for vulgar. Just let me give some vulgar storytelling in there that, that keeps me hooked. Because if there's no storytelling, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get, I'm going to lose my interest. I'm going to put it down. But if, if it's well-timed and well-written, I'm all for it. You know, let's see if how it goes. If it's funny. If mm-hmm. it's funny. Like I'd, I'd keep playing Borderlands just to hear more funny DJ, you know, you haven't, and stories you, and characters. DJ, you haven't spoken your mind on this yet. Um, what's your thoughts? I just want to know why. Like, why <laughs> like, Thank you. <laughs> someone like actually... 10 out of 10. <laughs> someone went out of their way to actually put this out to people. And I'm just all like, why i can't get over this cat man we haven't i mean you can you you can have the exact same argument on hotline miami is hotline miami not a good game hotline miami has its own audience but it's like he said here's the feature list for them experience the thrills of vandalism and from the safety of your computer curiosity and free will are your only motivators roll as you please it's like what the fuck? Like, <laughs> how is that? I don't know if you guys picture. remember back in the day. I can't remember the name of the game, but you remember there was that old Dreamcast game where you skated around and you spray Jet painted. Radio. Shit, Chris, you're yeah. taking me back. Right. So I mean, sure, I got no problem with vandalism. Jet Set Radio was awesome, right? But that it was, was also a good game. Futuristic. It had a good soundtrack. It was the the upbeat message was to get rid of like the overarching like world dominating thing and, and like sponsor free pirate radio like it had an idea that at least promoted some semblance of like something outside of, this place fucking sucks let's fucking tag it fuck those tigers like you know i don't know I, I you know i don't have any problem with a game with vandalism or people doing bads i mean i played how many hours of grand theft auto and beat up how many prostitutes <laughs> it's you know that's how that's these games are like that right so it's not that i have a moral problem with it i have an artistic problem with it of just here let's take the lowest common denominator and that's going to get us some free press which i will remind us we're still talking well, about let's stop game. doing it let's move on <laughs> yeah let's move on the before you move on to the next game on wednesday ali i'm going to ask you to rewind a bit because we skipped the uh, disaster report for an infinite droning and these are just also check out so you're just skim through them but we should we should still highlight them so just a oh, bit. I try, I try to do that, Fred. Yeah. Then. No, that's my fault. That's my fault. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So also check out Disaster Report 4, Summer Memories. In the shadow of a massive earthquake, you must brave a destroyed city where your choices will determine who survive. Uh, developer is Grinzella Inc. And the publisher is NIS America. There's a couple of their games coming out. It's a big publisher. <clears throat> and then Infinite Drone in Early Access. You're challenged to defeat waves of enemies, level your drone, and survive as long as you can. Infinite Dronin is a roguelike hack and slash arena fighter with a Twitch twist. So this is like a Twitch interactive one, but the developer is Neobird and the publisher is Upjers, which kind of sounds like up. Correct. Okay, right. All right, and then we have one more game for uh, is that, Wednesday. Is that a J pronounced like a Y, making that Upjers? I don't, I don't know. That's kind of what I thought. That'd be funny. That's kind of what I thought, which was that definitely makes it better. And then you do, right. yeah, you you do have a final one. blazed through we're better it's like a better game than that whatever the hell we just talked about for 10 minutes so again, what, 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 the, what the fuck, what the fuck fred? fred god damn it you gotta do better man actually that i mean i, I know we're supposed to be blazing through but that disaster report game looked pretty cool actually it did, it did. i i looked at that and i thought that's a really interesting uh concept which one game i have it's the one uh the shadow of a massive earthquake you must brave a destroyed city did you look at the trailer for that, that the, the, cool. well, I know, you, cool. if you guys want to rewind a little bit on the disaster report you said 
Yeah, that one looked cool. Yeah, and it's and it's published by NIS America as well. Uh, so it's it's got a publisher behind NIS America. The say, you know they're the dude uh, the dude guys. Um, no, but I mean like okay, guys. look, I, I you know, yeah, the, I'm I'm coming from Japan. I live here, and you know this correct. is a thing that we think about all the time. And I haven't seen a really cool game that you know I'm looking at the you know looking at the trailer. It looks like it's not you know a lot of places a lot of companies would be like you know hey let's how do we foist a shooter into this or whatever but it doesn't look like that it looks like mm -hmm. it's actually dealing with real issues and you meet survivors and you talk to people and I'm I'm very curious in about does I'm, I'm actually putting it back because I think I, I agree with you and and frankly I hesitated in in throwing this one into into the longer conversation I think this game has <laughs> a lot for it um, I just I. I my hesitation was it's a, it's a little it still looks a little too rough. Rough, um, yeah. yeah. I'll right? admit it. It does look a little bit rough, but I mean, you know, is this is isn't this the thing that we always say that if the content is good and the gameplay is good and Correct. the idea is good, if the art's a little bit rough, maybe we excuse it. But this looks to me like that. I mean, th this is the challenge that developers go through. Is come on, this is really niche, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You're gonna you know survive an earthquake and you're gonna deal with you know surviving after the earthquake. This is a this is kind of an out there idea, and maybe it was totally. difficult for them to get a whole bunch of funding for it, et cetera. But actually, it doesn't look bad. It looks reasonably good to me. I mean, it's, some of the art's a little bit rough, but it, it looks reasonably good. But I'm actually really compelled to, I wonder what this gameplay is like. I'm mm -hmm. really genuinely curious what this gameplay is like, and what do I get to do, and what, what are these meaningful choices I get to make. I'm actually, this is something I might actually go check out. Yeah, yeah I like it, it just I like released. This. It just came out, and and it looks like to me the I think it's got a lot going on for it. Uh, there's the the story the storytelling side of it, and and it's it's also an action game, right? It it, it feels like pretty action packed. Um, the but I don't know. It's it's it, to me it's just a little too rough, just on just on the edges um, for it to be. I mean, you know, it's sometimes not like, so I, I think we have to be forgiving and say, look, these guys are trying to do something new, something original. And you know, how many times have you shoved some goddamn pixel art game down my throat and told me, no, 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 don't look Every at the other pixel week. art? Like, literally, how Fair many? Fair enough. Yeah, but it's but another if another goddamn pixel art uh, roguelike, and I'm like, Ugh! and and now you're yeah, like, but he doesn't Ugh. have the pretense to be Ooh. anything more, right? But that's the problem. That's the whole problem. Is like. Unless you go pixel art, unless you say like ah, I'm crap and I'm not going to do good art, yeah. Then trying to make good and, and this is you know to be honest, this is a place that my studio sh struggles with as well. Is sure. when you try to be not indie, right? When you're an indie studio right. that's trying to not look indie and you're trying to go out and compete with AAA games, it's going to be a struggle because you don't have you know five million dollars and huge resources and animation budgets and blah 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 and so people are looking at you know your disaster report four and saying well this doesn't look like assassin's creed well, yeah yeah it's and, not and ubisoft and they didn't mm -hmm. have how many gajillion dollars to make it and they didn't want to make a pixel art game and now you're like well okay well let's look at this sludge game instead because you know at least they didn't even try but well, fuck you fred yeah you know, I mean, it's <laughs> Jeez, i'm taking so much heat <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you're gonna put that in front of me, and then you're not gonna put this in front of me. Come on, Fred. No, what do you mean? It's fair. It's fair. Um, no, no, I bow to you. I bow to you, Chris, and, and I apologize. I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You win on the internet again, Chris. You yes. win on the internet. internet victory. <laughs> that and a dollar fifty will buy me coffee. <laughs> but still, not put right. any cats in your house. Oh. All right. So, uh, no. all right we, We've got five games left, and it's all okay, Thursday okay. and Friday. So I suggest I suggest we grab this bull by the horn. Uh, Radio General, it's all it's all yours, Addy. All right, we'll roll right into it then. So Radio General is coming out Thursday. It's a World War II. You're a general sitting in a tent. All you have is a map and a radio. Can you win the battle? Radio General is a unique strategy game where you interact with your units all over uh, using. Uh, Units all over the radio using speech recognition. Test your medal and relive famous battles as a World War II general. Developer and publisher is Foolish Mortals. Chris, you have better thoughts about this one? Hell yeah! Fuck it, I'm gonna play this. All right. I, I, I mean, I the, I saw this and I was like, what a cool idea! I went, I looked through the screenshots, I watched the video, and I thought. Every one of these mm -hmm. screenshots looks like something I want to play. I love the maps. I love the visual look of this game. I love the concept of, you know, 
I mean, and if you think about it from a designer point of view, right? Like, like somebody was like, I can't make, uh, I can't go out and compete with, uh, you know, all of these great big, uh, huge 3D games or whatnot, but I can make a map and you could talk on a radio and let's make a game around that. Uh, what a great idea. And, and, and what an interesting way of looking at it to say that you are a general and you're here in this little tent and you just have the map and you're hearing people talk. God, I want to play this. What a neat game. I and, love everything about this. And can I add that the, uh, this is, I th I really think this is a one man team of, don't quote me on that. And when you really? go, yeah. And when you go on the studio's uh, YouTube channel, he's done a fantastic job. Uh, just, first of all, the trailers are killer. And, and if yeah. you, if you can hear the voiceovers, you should definitely check him out on YouTube because the voiceover and everything and, and just the animation. And, and, and I, I, I personally love when an indie dev, as long as he doesn't over overdo it but when an indie dev starts to play with a uh, real live action right like real filming I, I don't know how you call it in english like um basically like well, real tell us in french Fred. real footage right like just <laughs> no i don't know how you said it that's in not french, french. I'm <laughs> it's certain not real french. footage is not french <laughs> <laughs> prise de vue réelle, enfoiré. <laughs> when he does prise de vue réelle. Uh, and you're just saying whatever the hell because we don't know what you're saying. Like it's fun. That, that's how you say cat with two buttholes in French. It's true when you know it. <laughs> <laughs> to me that's it's it's fun right and he's got like a whole devlog series he also actually walks you through game development on unity and how he came together with the game and he, he pulled it together like the the youtube channel of the guy is wonderful this is a completely understated game it's not gonna get covered by mis mainstream press and it's a shame that i think that's opinion's very purpose to be it's it's to highlight stuff like that that's that's really slipping through the cracks um and uh and yeah, now in terms of the quality of the gameplay itself and, and is it fun to play that I, I, I really can't cast uh, my judgment on it because I, I, I feel like uh, this, this is the type of game you need to delve into to, because it's, it's a strategic game, right? So the strategy has to be appreciated for what it is and that takes hours to that your opinion is going to take hours to form. Uh, but, but two thumbs up in terms of production value. Uh, just marketing the the approach to to brand the product and and market it out there. This this guy is doing great. Uh, I hope he keeps going. It yeah, is I, a mm -hmm. six person studio and um, okay, like beyond amount of passion for what they're doing and to say whether or not the game is fun. Ultimately, they're they're really showing people an example of what it was like to lead a war effort. Mm -hmm. Like that, this is very, this is more simulation strategy than, than gameplay. It would be staring at a map and hearing fronts and making movements and best guesses, you know, and it may or may not work out. Sure, there's a gamified element to it, but like, I think this is phenomenal, especially for history buffs. And I think it could hit that sweet spot, kind of like Toy Soldiers did once upon a time for people um, mm -hmm. that is a very passionate, driven IP. And you'd be surprised how many dudes would want to play this what about you brad is this something you'd pick up oh i love this yeah. <clears throat> i mean from a history perspective i mean this is the the simulated footage that makes you really feel like you're transported back in time and uh the narrative that clearly went into this i mean i, I love this from every angle it's a great great captivating game for me I will say even just watching the trailer and seeing the way you move the units and the little arrows that you draw and stuff, it just looks cool. And I think about like how many history buffs there are out there who are really in the military history and civil war history and what. And, <laughs> and if you go to where those people hang out online, not in the dark web, but in the real web, if you go to where those people <laughs> hang out online, they have all of these little maps that look exactly like this, you know, and they have all these like, oh, this is the Battle of Chancellorsville and all the little, uh, and, and I, it's, it's, this let is, me, I mean, let me let you in on, for those guys. Let me let you in on, on, a, on a little secret that I've learned um, just scanning games for the past decade. <laughs> Like, a, like an aggressive mother. <laughs> if you make a game on World War One or World War Two, and your production value is decent, it doesn't need to be exceptional, it's decent, the, the odds of you as an indie, ve the indie developer to get some sales in at least, I don't want to say have a tremendous success, but get some, get some serious sales in, is relatively, substantially higher than in any other genre. 
And I don't know why that is, right? Like, I don't know why that is, but the moment you... there's a whole subculture of people that love this. Have you ever been to a military museum and seen the people there or gone to, like, a Civil War battle site? There's there's people... That, no, they, have, they do reenactments. There's a whole culture of people that really are interested in this sort of stuff. It's, it's yeah. like, why are there all those World War II movies? And you know, we got whole stations on, on cable dedicated to nothing but old uh, World War II footage. There's a bunch of people who love this stuff, and this is a, right down their alley. This is really cool, actually. Anyone else on this? Anyone who want to smack it down? Because it hasn't been done yet. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything, DJ? There's not much to smack down. I mean, it's something I personally wouldn't play, but I love... I love what they're doing here. Like it's in in ways it's very innovative because I believe because uh, they said it's command based, right? Like you voice the commands. Yeah, so, it's it's voice command based. Yeah. So so I I saw on a someone who was playing the new uh, Mountain Blade, right? They had to add a mod in to have that even be in the game. So I'm all like, they that game, you know, has probably sold a, a crap ton since this came out. And they have to have mods to actually be added to in that game for this to happen. And this studio has just put it in their game. So it's I mean, like the basis of their whole game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, but it's I mean, cool. It's new. It's original. Don't we like that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Totes. Uh, yeah. I love that. Did you say totes, Fred? Yeah, I totally did. He did say totes. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> I'm Holy sorry. Shit, yeah. It's 1997 all <laughs> over again. Totes. <laughs> So. I say it all the time, but um, <laughs> I regret it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. All right. Let's see what else we got. The pr procession to cavalry is also coming out. Oh, that's a funky one. Um, pilfer from pirates conspire with cardinals and perform miracles with an incompetent magician. The procession to cavalry is a Python esque adventure game made from Renaissance paintings and a spiritual successor. The critically acclaimed Four Last Things, built by Joe Richardson and published by Joe Richardson and Super Hot Presents. <clears throat> I'm, I'm uh, pushing the trader right now. Sorry, guys. Okay. There we go. No, I messed up big time. <laughs> it's the last time I use uh, Streamlabs. <laughs> Tell you that much. <laughs> Procession Cavalry is a. Uh, it's one of those games that. Here it is. It's one of those games that are so indie, Chris. Uh, here you go. You see it now? It is. Uh, I'm gonna remove it from the the two bottom ones, but uh, the the this is. It's actually a. It's a sequel. Uh, so it's not the first game. It's a sequel. And um, this guy seems to be in love with the whole like medieval to Renaissance era. Uh, and he's, uh, he's taking all these, essentially, paintings that you're going to see at the Louvre and, and other places like that. It's a museum in France, Chris. And... Uh... <laughs> Thanks for that. No fucking clue. Oh. 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 I had to do it. It's the world's muse biggest museum in the... I think, yes. Um, and, I've been there like eight times, dude. <laughs> I bet, yeah, no, it's fantastic. It's amazing. To use the bathroom? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've pooped there. That's a fact. I've pooped there on numerous occasions. Oh, God. And uh, the fact of the matter, I think there's... So I don't know if this is any fun, right? Like, I, And I, I wouldn't say it is, but... What do you mean you don't know if this is fun? It's, it's fun, fucking hilarious. Right? This like, is cool. is it, it's very, what? like... Monty Python okay. esque with the art for sure. Well, no, I feel like I'm walking on thin ice I, after yeah. the the sludge thing. But the, no, the... but that's a, how do you not <laughs> how do you not see the difference, right? This is a perfect example, dude. Okay, go right? ahead. This this is funny. This is interesting. This is cool. It's got a it's got a look. It's got a feel. You know, every I we all grew up watching Monty Python and those great. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, little and obviously so did he, right? And this is funny this is good this is interesting and in the world of i'm gonna do something wacky and funny and it's gonna get me some hits and it's gonna get me come pe people to come look at my stuff do we not all agree that this is a thousand times better than hey if i draw really crappy art and cats with two buttholes and some guy peeing in a toilet and put it in a trailer and try to be edgy how do we not see that this is so much better this is this took work this took 
you know, some sort of creative talent that took interest. It took, it, it, there's, there's mm -hmm. something to this that's really interesting. Now, maybe it's not for everybody, but this is cool. But you so, know, the little bit where he's poking the thing and the guy's eyes come open and he's animated all these Renaissance paintings. This is fun. This is interesting. I would totally check this out. How does he, you're a game developer, Chris. Like, how does a guy go like that, uh, go about making a game like that? Is he, is he literally like, Photoshopping. All right, I will tell you, I do a lot of hidden object games. This is actually how I pay a yeah, lot of yeah. my bills. And one of the places <laughs> that we get a lot of the, the stuff for our hidden object games, I don't know if you know this, a lot of museums, not the Louvre, by the way, but the, uh, for instance, the New York Met, they have a bunch of royalty-free images out on the internet. And you can go grab those. And I've done this before, actually. I did a game called Antique Road Trip, where we actually took Renaissance paintings and then we like put bicycles and and clowns and stuff in it, and, and that was the game. Was like find the stuff that's not supposed to be in the Renaissance painting and click on the weird stuff, right? And people love that, and it was actually really cheap for me to build because those are royalty free images. You can grab them off the internet, and so I'm certain that's what this guy did. Is he went and he found a whole bunch of, and of course all the museums have all these old Renaissance paintings and stuff there. I'm sure that's what happened uh, because all that's freely available, and it's it's actually a really nice use of this because you have all of these resources available on the internet to go you know grab all this so it's it's actually kind of a smart use of i don't have a whole bunch of artists i don't want to paint a whole bunch of images but you know what there's a thousand years worth of art history out there i can grab a bunch of this stuff and use it now there's still a lot of work involved somebody's got to go touch up these images and you know animate them and you know move them around and you know if, if you just grab raw images they're not going to be uh they're not going to be colored in the same way so you're gonna, there's still work to be done in it but that's that's I would guess that's probably how he's I, I say he because it says Joe uh, with Joe Richardson. There may be more people on the team, but uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's how they put this together. Uh, but it, but it's you know, it's work, but it's it's a it's a fun use of these these wonderful historical assets that that come with sort of a feeling. And, a, you know, when you see these old pictures of, you know, Leonardo da Vinci or whatever, and you're, you're like, oh, that's I know that painting, but it's been used in a funny way. It's a great way to sort of grab hold of this shared lore that we have in art history and use it in a fun way. I love everything about this. This is, I, I again, Fred, I don't know what's, maybe you were stoned this week or something because you're like, not a great week in games. There's some great stuff in this list. This is really yeah. interesting, fun indie stuff. Yeah, yeah, and no, no, no I know. Skis. Because, yeah, we don't have the big blockbuster this week and, it, and, it's yeah. a, and it's a very small, humble week in gaming. But yeah, no, I just did, but, uh, you know, this, this game, for example, it's going to, it's not going to be picked up by press at all. At Which all. is why this show should exist. Yes, you know thanks. what? Mm -hmm. you know, Thank every, you. Every time we do a, a review of the latest Assassin's Creed, I always think to myself, like, why? Why are we doing yeah, this? Yeah, like, fuck it. Like, Ubisoft doesn't need us. Yeah, that's exactly. That's, but, you know, there's a, there's a, you know, there's a hundred developers, not a thousand, there's a hundred developers like these people or like the people that put together that uh, the Earthquake game that we were looking at that are, that are just starving for somebody to come notice their stuff and yeah. they're doing great it's work. It's so true, it's so true, it's so true. You know, I, I used to I used to take it personally when uh, like uh, 47 Communications, which is like the 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 big PR firm for uh, all the AAA games they're based in Los Angeles, and when they would decline me like in my, on my request to, re to, to to review Resident Evil or, or whatnot, right? And now I realize, like this, this, this stuff doesn't phase me anymore. I, we do get, just for the record, we do get the review copies, but it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't phase me anymore because, like, at the end of the day, that's not our purpose. That's like that's not our reason. You've got thousands of websites that are going to cover this crap, anyways. And and the fact of the matter is, you've got all these great these great games, and you know this this is a title that is not. It doesn't expect you to plug in 60 hours of gameplay into it, right? It's, it, this is the type of stuff that hopefully you pick it up for under 10 bucks or 10 to 15 bucks, whatever. And then you play two hours, have a blast, and you move on. And, and I think that, you know, that, that approach to gaming is very much omnipresent in the PC gaming community. And yet it is not um, represented in, in press. It's like, it's like, it's like PC gamers don't exist almost. Even within, even like on the website as big as pcgamer.com, right? It's like, yeah. it's like that. But but if you you know, I've grown, I've I've evolved long enough uh, among PC gamers now to know that we all play these types of games and we're all interested and we surf Steam on a regular basis to go find these types of games and just play with them and have fun with them and move on. Um, I I will tell you as a gamer, 
if I picked up a game like this once a week, and I spent a week on it. I, that's all I need to spend. I spent a week on it. That's and a I long spent, time. <laughs> I, I don't, you know, but I'm, I'm not going to spend like a week week on it. I'm going to spend like you know, I get you. a couple, a couple, you know, like an hour a day or something like that while I'm doing other stuff. But, you know, I'll check this out for a little bit. And if I spent 10, 15 bucks on that, I'd be okay with that, right? I'd be totally okay with that in the same way that I would be okay with spending 10 bucks to go see a movie for three hours, right? And Or two and a half hours of movie time, right? And if there was a new one of these that was interesting and creative and did something different each week and I could have that experience, I would I would say that's a win for a PC gamer. And okay. this idea that every game's got to be a 50 hour, you know, 500 million Doesn't. dollar Grand Theft Auto thing. I don't think that we need that as gamers as much as we need a lot more of good quality stuff like this. That's wouldn't you, wouldn't you also say that there's a real purpose for time wasters with a cultural value? I mean, yeah. so so many of the the time wasting games we play to just you know the uh, the, the the games we play on mobile, the games we play oh, on terrible uh, hyper you know, casual games, yeah. exa everything, exactly. Uh, I mean, they, they make us uh, less intelligent while we're participating. And you know, yep. if, if we could literally do something like this, and God forbid, learn something every once in a while, like. <laughs> Would that be so or, bad? Or just genuinely be amused. I mean, just looking yeah, at Yeah, just have or, fun, right? Yeah, like, looking at this compared to I'm gonna play Candy Crush for how many hours and mm -hmm. buy how many lollipop hammers and it's and it's you're literally <laughs> just turning your head off exactly when you play hyper casual games. And, mm -hmm. and 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 shit, Candy Crush isn't even hyper casual. That's like that's that's heady compared to most hyper casual games. Something like this that's got some content, it's got you know some interesting stuff in it, there's some laughs in it. Good God, the world needs more of this. And and I would argue, Fred, the world needs more press to pick. Not to, It's great totally, that OPM yeah, 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 does yeah. this, but I wish there were 10 channels like this that, that people would support and they would go to and they would say, oh, yeah, this is what's been curated in the indie game press because that's what's cool. You know I what wish I've, there were more of this. You know what I've been wanting to do is, and, and this is just kind of a side thought, but I think it's worth it's worth shooting out there for the considering the scope of this conversation is, you know, there's a few of us on Metacritic who cover what no one else covers. Um, yeah. And I was thinking of reaching out to all these much, much smaller sites and saying, hey guys, why don't we... Why don't we unify that process and, and we come together on a weekly basis and we say, in Harmony, the 10 of us are going to cover the 7, 10, 15 games. And, and suddenly we put all the, all the valuable games in the spotlight, right? Because essentially if we all cover them, then they all get their established score on Metacritic and they all move forward getting a little bit more attention. Um, and it's, it, it really comes down to just coordinating between the smaller sites to come together and do this. Uh, and, and no one. I, I don't even think you need to have some sort of, of secret coven to do it. I think if there, if there were 10 sites that just watched each other and yeah. said, you know, hey, look, OPM picked this up last week. Well, this is something we ought to pick up this week. This, this procession of cavalry looks cool. This is something we ought to mention. That would be powerful for these, these you know, I, I would say these, these, uh, triple a indie studios right you know indie studios that are actually making solid interesting content how can we push that further how can we get more support for it but but you know what really needs to happen is uh, people need to buy this stuff yeah right i mean it's, stop spending your money on lollipop hammers for candy crush and buy this yeah. for crying out loud yeah yeah i mean but, but you know i think on uh, not to linger on it because we got to move on but i think it will come you know if, if 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 you look at the movie industry as kind of a uh, a template of what is to come you've got you've got you know the independent movie channel you've got you've got all the kind of these movements that came together to to support these smaller efforts and put them in the spotlights and in no way has it ever achieved like hollywood stardom right like you you've never reached that stage with these smaller movies but still we've we, they've managed to kind of put them in the spotlight and make them bigger than they would be without without that type of support now you could say that in gaming that's the role of a publisher but i don't think so i, th I think that's the role of press mainly um, press to come I, together. I think press really fails the game industry. Yeah, I think and so it too. It fails the game industry by by allowing the publishers to just drag them to whatever they spent the most money on. And, yeah, and that's yeah, not yeah, new. Yeah. That's that's been happening for twenty some odd years now. Yeah, let's move on. But yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Mm. All right, the next game we're going to take a look at is Hinterhalt Three Early Access. Oh well, just... sorry to interrupt you, Annie, but this should this should rock your world. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, but it's right in line with what we're saying. 
Join the battlefield in this chaotic warfare and dominate your opponents in this whimsical and unique setting. Immerse yourself in an indispensable quirky conflict between nations of toy soldiers and lead your army to victory at all costs. The developer is Philip Guimera and the publisher is Fell GC Games Development. If I can if I can preface this by saying I could not find a trailer. I could not find a no. YouTube channel. I could not find anything but a Steam page on 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 this game. Yeah, but there's a trailer on the Steam page. So, yeah, yeah, there's a tra- yeah, no, the Steam page has everything it needs to it needs to have. But but you know, like once you start clicking on the links, like visit the websites, check out uh. the YouTube channel. It's it's there's nothing, right? And typically, ninety nine percent of the time, when I see that, I skip because the quality is not there. Mm. But uh, frankly, I look at you, Logan. You were talking about toy soldiers. Um, mm-hmm. And you know yeah. I'm I'm not a developer, so it's not like I'm an expert in to, in terms of game development. But this is a one man show, and I think this guy is crushing it personally. For a one man show, this looks dope. I think this guy is crushing <laughs> it. Yeah. Sure, I mean he's he's spent some time. Um, it's the the art styles refined to a very specific thing. The problem is, is I've worked on toy soldiers as a franchise i've worked on fear and fear had a mini toy soldiers one when i was at monolith like i've seen the small soldier thing so much that i'm a bad audience for this you're jaded i'm not jaded but i just don't think there's like i I take it with a vein of it is a one-man show and he has put in a lot of work but as as a as a project it doesn't necessarily speak too highly of a genre that would push a lot of people to it because it's just kind of a, a shooter with an art fix to it. I don't see anything else truly. Does it look fun to you? Me personally, I wouldn't play it, but that's just me. What do you think, DJ? Does it look fun to you? Something you play? I get Army Men vibes, but in a first person a- aesthetic, basically. And that's about it. I mean, I guess for the time when Army Men came out, I guess it was kind of cool, but I wasn't into it then. I'm really not into it now. It- but yeah, like from and, a, from and, a consumer know, I, standpoint, be, I get what you're saying. Like, and and I'd and, be and I think curious to play it and see how well it played. It just this this is the where you know the thing that we're talking about, putting this all in context of the show today. The thing that we're talking about about there should be great AAA indie games that do new and interesting things and they bring something new to the table. I don't, this is not the way to do it. Going head to head with first person shooters with a slightly sure. graphically different first person shooter. That's probably not your best tactic to take. If that's the thing that you want to do. Um, that's, I guess that's where I want to be with this, but I, I don't want to put this down. This is, this looks like really no, good it's work. Fair. Somebody it's fair. put a lot of time and energy into this. I, this, this looks like it's probably pretty cool. I just, I'd be very surprised to see, you know, I'd very, be, be very surprised to see this do well just because, you know, uh, I've I've got Overwatch that I can play if I yeah. don't want to play this. And that's, and, that's, and, and soon Overwatch too. That's hard. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. yeah. these are, and how many, how many, <laughs> Valorant even now? Hundreds of millions of dollars spent on that. And it's not like the it's not like the Overwatch developers are shit, right? I mean, they're they, not. you spend no, a bunch yeah. of money and they're going to put something pretty cool together. So that that's what you're fighting. Yeah, and and with regards, I looked at Hinterhalt uh, one and Hinterhalt two, and if this is a one person thing, you can see the progression that he's taken this FPS engine he's worked with. Um, he's selling this for five dollars and four dollars respectively, which also doesn't necessarily lend a good credence to building your audience. He, he is fighting that fight like Chris talked about. And when you ask me if I'd play it, you know, it's not a knock against the game itself. It's just there so you're saying a it's thousand under- other things that I would play. And to your comment of like, would I hire him on my team? Unfortunately, single developers um, brought onto a team still have that singer, single developer Swiss Mentality. Army knife. He could be a jack of all trades, but not particularly strong at anything. But he has a good way to be able to at least put out product, and he's done that. Or if it's a multi-person yeah, it's team and he has external people helping him, he could be an outsourcing producer. Maybe there's there's levels of degrees of things that he could be really really talented at, and be able to look at you know last minute I, things. I would I would you know if I if I were giving you know critiques or or, or whatever I would giving life advice to what do we decide his name is Philippe. Mm-hmm. 
it wouldn't be go get a job somewhere. It would, I mean, this is obviously a person that can put together a quality product. This is obviously a person who could put together a quality game. Shut I would it. say maybe change the genre that's, that's, that's that you're not going to go out and compete with uh, doom and, and, you know, come on, you're going to compete. You're going to, the, the whole world can play doom now. And, and a re- did we not just talk a couple of weeks ago about how yeah. much, you know, everybody loved the new doom. Yeah. That's but hold on, hold on, Chris, know? do you know how many FPS in the indie scene are big successes? And they don't look like this, right? They don't look like this. Actually, they look a lot like the World War One, World War Two. Most of the time, they are World War games. Uh, like I could name a few, right? Uh, but I could be wrong. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe there's maybe there's a place. But for FPS, no, there's shooters. there's definitely an audience for indie FPS. Um, and, maybe and, I'm wrong. And I, typically, it's very the, typically it's in the history. Uh, it's in the it's in the inst- history section. Like if you make an indie game, an FPS in 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 a time period, um, you're gonna be and and your production value is up there. You're gonna be pretty successful. Um, so anyway, I've said what I have to say about yeah. this. Yeah, uh, we I'm can move on. Me. We can move on. Uh, Ancient Enemy, yes, all yours, Eddie. All right, Ancient Enemy is gonna be our last Thursday release game. Uh, and Ancient Enemy is an RPG card battler set in a crumbling world where the forces of evil have already won. Blast distorted enemies and a satisfying, or sorry, I can't read. This is the part where I can't read. <laughs> Blast distorted enemies with a satisfying range of spells and abilities. Journey into a sacred wilderness, or scarred wilderness rather, and draw power and hope from the landscape to defeat the deadliest foe of all. This is developed and published by Grey Alien Games. Are you a big card fan, Brad? Do you like the card games online? I was about to say, this is how you lose me real quick. Um, <laughs> you, I can just see your face. Just <laughs> <laughs> Same here. I'm exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, you know, kudos to them to putting a lot of detail and effort into it. And I totally appreciate that. Uh, just unfortunately not my thing. To me, it looks very much, while it does have cards and it could have a really fun, like repeatable playthrough that could feel really good to people um there's once again so many ccgs out there and that makes me you know uh, like you say there's these great big walls of content that you're looking at in the screenshots and you're like whoa that's going to take a while to learn but it's presented in a really nice way where somebody who's into this kind of thing might be like all right I'll, i'll i'll play um, but it's, I got it. This is just a, being a strategy game developer in 2020 is the most frustrating experience in the world. Uh, people just don't have the time and the energy to learn your mechanics in the way that they used to. And I, I know they must fight the same battle. I know we fight it. And every strategy game developer I know fights it. There was a great game made by some friends when I was at, uh, uh that Masquerada game that was really cool. And it was the same oh, thing. It just, yeah. It had really complex mechanics, and yeah, you know, they put so much time and energy and love into that thing, and uh, they lost a fortune on it just because nobody was going to learn all that. So that's that's the problem with strategy games now. It's not a hit on strategy. It's certainly not a hit on this game, which looks really good. It's just wow, it's a hard time to make strategy games. Well, it's almost like you got to have a big hit and make a name for yourself with, with, with a game. And, and then once you have that fan base, it will carry over. It will cross over every game you make after, right? Well, one of the struggles that you have is that, that people have, just like we're talking about with Warcraft or trading or, uh, collectible card games, people get invested in something. And all right, look, I've learned how to play Total War now. And it took me a long time to learn how to play Total War. Yeah. So I'm not going to learn all that all over again. Or if I am going to go play another game, I'm going to constantly be hitting you with, yeah, this isn't the way they do it in Dota. This isn't the way they do it in Total War. You should do it like they do it in Dota. And it's that constant fight between like, well, we're trying to do something new. Well, yeah, yeah, but Dota does it this way and this is the way I want it. Yeah. And you're like, well, then I could try to make a copy of Dota, but then you're just going to go play Dota, right? Uh, yeah, so, it's, like ah, you, it's like you want to think outside the box, but they don't want you to think outside the box. Well, and especially for big, complicated strategy type games, because there's a huge learning curve and and time is money. People don't have time like they used to. I mean, every second of everybody's life is they're being bombarded by, you know, look at this Netflix, listen to this Spotify, play this hyper casual game, get your ass back to work. They're constantly being in a way that I don't remember the world being when I was young in the 
early dawn of time. And so <laughs> you're fighting for that, that I need 10 minutes. That's it. To, to, to my strategy game, you can learn it in 10 minutes. That's all I need. I need 10 minutes of your time. But for 10 minutes, you're going to have to think for a little bit. And people are not, no, no, I don't, you don't get 10 minutes of my actual thought. I reserve that for work. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. And so it's a, it's a struggle. <laughs> and blasphemy, sir. How dare you? <laughs> every, every stride. I think, I think the summary of the game is going to fight this. I think the summary of tonight's event, it's, it's tough for indie. <laughs> it's tough out there. <laughs> Newsflash, nothing's changed. <laughs> it's still the same. <laughs> and yet, you know what I did this week? For the first time ever, I downloaded Unity. And I think I did it just out of curiosity. Um, and uh, well, that's where it starts. You're going to make your own. No, I don't have time. No, 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 no. Year. It's going to happen. I, don't, I, I was tempted, but then I realized if I do this, I'm going to get completely unfocused. And No, no, no. Focus on opinions. The fact of the matter is... When you done, what kind of shocked me, not shocked me, but uh, surprised me, I guess, uh, when I downloaded Unity is that it doesn't appeal to the, it, at least it doesn't market itself as, hey, you're going to make great indie games. It's, hey, you're going to make great AAA games. It's just going to be hard. Have you noticed? Yeah, like, nobody, nobody dreams of being an indie dev. Yeah, like, yeah. It's immedi dream, immediately you're I, thrown I into like these Will amazing Wright visuals. Or Sid Meier. I don't dream of being the guy that made Alder's Blood. That, I am that the guy, and it sucks. It's a shit life, man. <laughs> <laughs> Not no, yeah, yeah. Alder's Blood guy. I'm just saying, being an indie dev sucks balls. That's all I'm saying. Hi. <laughs> Thanks guys. I had a I had a fun time. Thanks thanks for it. I feel excited about tomorrow now. <laughs> Actually Corona doesn't feel all that bad anymore. It's all relative. <laughs> yeah. I think we're out of this. Thanks guys. Uh had a good time. I think uh we'll sorry, I wanna apologize to the, the, the audience who has uh left us because we our technical difficulties today were pretty rough. Um wanna apologize about that. We're gonna fix it up this week and, and make it uh seamless hopefully next week. Uh still had a great time. Thanks Ali for picking up the picking up the Adam Slack. <laughs> and, I can uh, read you guys in, all have in, in English without a French Louvre sassiness. Yeah, it was. I thought it was pretty. <laughs> I don't know if it was good, but it was pretty understandable. <laughs> <laughs> She's a step up from me. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. You guys have a great night, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>